I'm someone's small boat, far out at sea, sailing from what has so long sustained me toward what I don't know. It began with a visit to the poet Dan Gerber. Growing up in western Michigan in the 1950s and 60s, Jack Smith had long admired Gerber's poetry. As a young man, Smith frequently visited the offices of the literary journal Sumac, founded by Gerber and Jim Harrison in 1968. Many years later, while visiting Gerber, Smith became transfixed by the way the light played off the poet's face as he read. He recreated the effect in his studio and thus began a three-year journey traveling around the country and out of it on a pilgrimage, he says, to meet poets he admired, both famous and obscure. Charles Simic, Carolyn Forche, Donald Hall, Quincy Troop, Jane Hirschfield, and more. He sketched them, took photographs, and then returned to his studio in Taos, New Mexico, to paint. The result is Portraits of American Poets by Jack R. Smith, an exhibition of 28 luminous paintings which premiered at the Cornell Fine Arts Museum in Winter Park, Florida in January 2009. The exhibition was arranged by Sullivan Goss, an American gallery. Each painting is accompanied by a poem representative of that poet's work. With this series, Jack Smith has created more than a tribute to poets he admires. Each portrait is a study of a character and spirit, as singular as each poetic voice. Nobel laureate Derek Walcott, who was born and lives on the Caribbean island of St. Lucia, wears a shirt the color of his beloved sea. His gaze is direct, his eyes as pale blue as the sky. The light reflects a look of compassionate wisdom. But the shadow of his face offers the viewer a more formidable side to the writer of modern epic poems about mythic characters cast in the landscape of his home. Achilles peed in the dark, then bolted the half-door shut. It was rusted from sea blast. He hoisted the fish pot with the crab of one hand. In the hole under the hut he hid the cinder block's step. Hayden Carruth, who died in 2008, wears a heavy sweater like a burden, his weathered face and weary eyes a study of long struggle. The reflected image suggests another persona, perhaps the shadow of mental illness that followed Carruth for much of his life. The mountains, from their place behind our shoulders, lean close a moment, as if for a final inspection, but with kindness, a benediction as the darkness falls. Kim Adonizio, with her bare skin and tattooed arms, projects a defiant sensuality echoed in her poetry. Look at you, sitting there being good. After two years, you're still dying for a cigarette and not drinking on weekdays. Who thought that one up? Each of these frank, unflinching portraits vibrates with an inner luminosity. That is no accident. Rather, it is the result of Smith's technical virtuosity. Painting on six-inch by six-inch copper plates, Smith uses a technique known as black oil painting, associated with the Dutch school during the 18th century. When applied to the copper plates, the mixture forms a translucent layer that suspends the pigment above the painting ground, allowing light to penetrate and reflect off the surface of the copper plate. Thus, it is literally lit from within. Following in the history of oil painting associated with the great Dutch miniaturists, Smith demonstrates that small size is no impediment to captivating power. With each portrait, the viewer enters a private space where image and language at once capture a moment and transcend it, and in that small world, Smith invites the viewer, the reader, to look more closely, reflect more deeply on the myriad small moments that collectively make up the human experience.